everybody. Thank you. And you know, thank you to so many people for turn on your cameras. We love seeing you guys. And uh, I, I know Shannon was saying a few minutes ago, you know, we don't always get to see you guys. So we feel really, uh, I'm not sure how we feel about this. That, uh, for Mark, everybody turns their cameras on. Um, uh, so anyway, I'm, I'm glad to see so many of you and uh, so glad to see such a great group going. It is growing and growing. The numbers are fantastic. So thanks for coming out this morning. Um, we've got a special opportunity this morning. We're going to spend some time with Mark Stark. And we all know Mark as the CEO of our franchise organization, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Arizona, California, and Nevada Properties. Yet, not all of you may have heard that for the sixth year in a row, Mark was named by the Swanapool 200, the Power 200, as one of North America's most powerful and influential real estate industry leaders. Wow. Let that soak in for a second. Six years in a row in the Swanapool Power 200. That is a huge, huge honor and a distinction. And Mark is our leader. And we get to, to kind of keep him to ourselves. But uh, the industry has recognized Mark for all that he's done. And uh, it's very rare air up there. So folks, uh, please uh, know that we've got the best of the best leading our organization. Mark is an amazing leader. And he's our CEO. So I just want to take another quick second and promote Mark's Facebook Live. Um, every Tuesday afternoon at 1.30, make sure to fit that into your calendar. There is some phenomenal information that we get from Mark every single week at 1.30. And it's 20 to 35 minutes of just jam-packed wisdom, information, knowledge. And each week, uh, Mark will have a different subject. Sometimes he's got some special guests on board. But I uh, just encourage all of you to take some time out and mark that time in your calendar. So Tuesday afternoons, 1.30, give it that 20 to 30 minutes to have some special time with Mark Stark. Um, he is that influential leader, and I want to know what he knows. So put that in your calendar. With that, please welcome Mark Stark, our CEO, owner of our franchise. And uh, we so appreciate you taking the time to join us this morning. The meeting is yours. Well, I think uh, you said it all. I think uh, everybody have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> now, thank you for that very warm uh, <clears throat> uh, announcement or invitation. What, what is it? Uh, a recognition. I really do uh, uh, appreciate it. Um, I love this, and I really love the topic that we're going to talk about today. But I want to I want to do it kind of as a preface. Here is what's most important to me is if you have a question that you want to ask as I go through this, just make a note of what your question is, because I want to leave some time open, uh, because there's nothing more important than if you're thinking about something, and even though I go over something that is meaningful, if it's not meaningful enough for you, or you don't have enough uh, information around it, I definitely want to answer your question. So uh, keep that in mind as we go through this. Um, I was asked to kind of share with you how I got started um, and in the business as an agent and, and, and explain what I did to become successful. And then secondly, what I would do today if I was in this environment specifically today, um, what would I do differently? What would I make sure that I'm doing along those lines? So we're going to, we will cover all that. Um, right here, right now. And again, look forward to your questions. Um, give you a little bit of background for those of you who don't uh, um, know, uh, or uh, uh, if I went over it and it's a review, it will be quick. Um, but give you my, the 30 second review. I started in the business. I'm originally from Chicago, Illinois, moved out to Las Vegas to go to hotel management school. Um, started working at the hotels to work my way through college and that decided that wasn't something I wanted to do. And at 21 years of age, my roommate in college said, why don't we get our real estate license? And so I went to real estate school, went to what they call career nights after that and said, you know what, <clears throat> this looks like it could be for me. Um, you know, I, I was always a hard worker and I said, I like it. The harder you work, the more success you can have. And if you're lazy, well, you know what? You're not going to do well, but I can deal with that. All right. And, and that's what really brought me in the business. So it was just my roommate in college who said, you know what? We love Vegas. Let's, uh, let's get our license. 
So when I got in the business, uh, coming from college, um, I really did not have any sphere of influence. I mean, most of the people I knew couldn't afford beer besides afford a home. So it wasn't all the people I interacted with really wasn't an opportunity for me to depend on them to grow my business. And so I needed to, my number one goal, and I had a great mentor in my manager, uh, George Head. And he said, Mark, just follow my lead. If you do what I tell you to do, I promise you, you'll be successful. And uh, I'm, I'm that guy who gets blind focus. And I'm like, great, I will follow tooth and nail of what you tell me. And, uh, and we'll tweak as we go along. And hopefully it'll all work out. So one of the things he told me is, he goes, look, um, most people look at their day in hours. I'm going to tweak it for you. You're going to go out and meet people, but I don't want you to view your day in hours. I want you to view your day in appointments. I said, okay, tell me more. He goes, I want you, because I was 21, I had no other responsibilities. I wouldn't advise this to you. I would drop it in half. But he said, I want you to commit to two new appointments per day in front of a potential buyer and or a potential seller. So as long as they're new and not someone you've worked with prior, okay, which for me was easy because there was nobody, um, that will work. Now, keep in mind, guys, I had, um, I was, when I got into real estate, I was living with my girlfriend. We were breaking up at the time. She said, well, Mark, you keep the apartment. I was like, okay. And that lasted about 30 days because all I really had was a credit card. I was making $18,000 a year working at the Las Vegas Hilton at the time. And when I got into real estate, I cut that cord and wanted to go full-time into real estate. So I was, I was able to take, I wouldn't advise that to everybody, but I was able to take more risk because you know what? It was just me. And you know what? If I uh, had to sleep on the floor at a buddy's house, which I ended up doing, um, that's fine. I can do that. Um, and so cut all ties, my income stopped, and I really had to just make this work. Um, and, you know, it's funny tell you a, a real quick story about that is I was working at the Hilton and my real plan was I was going to go through all the training, get a few in escrow, then I was going to quit. And I got called in by the manager of that office. And he said to me, he goes, I haven't seen you. And I said, well, here's my plan. I'm going to go through the training. I'm going to get a few in escrow and then I'm going to leave the hotel business. And he said, well, how about this? If I don't start seeing you immediately, you're fired. And I go, Okay, that's a plan too. Got it. Um, how about I go with your plan and you start seeing me immediately and I'll start working now, which is exactly what I did at that time. So George said, I want you to go out every day and you've got to meet two people that you can go on an appointment with, potentially selling or buying. I said, great. I focused on three areas for sell by owners, expired listings, and door knocking. That, were the th that was the three areas that I focused in on to generate my two appointments. Now keep this in mind, my day did not end until I got those two. Once I got those two, if I did it by noon, I could really do anything else the whole day. I would work, but the pressure was off. I did my job for the day. And that's really when you read over my four-step business plan that I wrote for the company, it really stemmed from that experience because it was very, it was very um, easy for me to get my arms around because I today still do not believe in annual business plans. I just don't. I believe in annual budgets, but I don't believe in annual business plans. And here's why, because I have shown and I see it again and again, agents, and I will say this, most companies I know can't get their arms around a full year business plan and really create a living, breathing document. What happens is you spend all this time creating an annual business plan and where does it go? In the drawer. 
You know what it comes out of the drawer? A year later, when you're updating your annual business plan for the next year. That is a joke. That doesn't work. So what I learned that does work, thanks to George, is, you know, Mark, you couldn't get your arms around a year. You couldn't get your arms around six months, not a quarter, not a month, not even a week. But you know what you can get yourself and your arms around? A day. So that was my mindset. All I worried about is the day I was there. Didn't worry about anything else because I learned very quickly, you put a lot of productive days together, my quarter, my month, my year was going to be awesome. So all I focused in on when I went in, I knew exactly what I had to accomplish that day. And for me, it was two new appointments with two new potentials, either listing or buying. So out I go. Um, certainly each day, I started off calling expired listings. Wouldn't call before nine, but I called expired listings. Okay. Remember, and I learned this really quick, the phone has one job. One. Get a face-to-face -face appointment. It's not there to sell. It's not there to present. One thing was a... a, a, a uh, uh, um, how do I want to put this? A little system I had, and it was very effective. In the middle of a statement, I would cut myself off. I would say, I would start going and I go, you know what? That's a great question, Mr. Johnson. What really meant, you know what? Let me do this. this is, I'm not going to do this justice. I'm going to be in your area at noon, okay? Between noon and one. Can I stop on by then or would later in the evening be better for you? I go right for the appointment. The phone only exists to get an appointment. Anything else you're doing on the phone, you're blowing it. It would be like your car key is there to start your car. I also wash my car with my car key. You do? Okay. If you're doing that, it's probably not the right tool. The phone is not there to present. If you're using it to present, it is like you're using your car key to wash your car. I knew that. So I would cut myself off, get the appointment. Anytime they opened up the door when I was on the phone for an appointment, that's what I shot for. Now, keep this in mind. Because I had door knocking as part of, for sell by owners, expires, and door knocking. Because I had door knocking as one of my focuses, I didn't care if I went to an appointment and it didn't go well. Or they had that something happened or they just no showed me. I didn't worry about it because guess what? I was already in the area and what could I do in that area? Knock doors. And remember, I was only focused on one thing, finding two people a day, five days a week that I can do a new presentation for. All I cared about. That's all I did. And when I get into some things I would do differently, Part of that is, is so much uh, um, leveraging up my business, which we'll talk later, but that's all I did, all right? And so I would go out on these appointments each day, each day. Some days, yep, I would be working till eight, nine o'clock at night. Um, other days, I got my appointments done uh, before noon. Now, as I got into this, I started, all I was doing is meeting people, constantly meeting opportunities, meeting opportunities, meeting opportunities. In my first 12 months of business, doing this system, doing nothing else well, really, nothing else, things I would do differently, yes, but in doing nothing else well, selling homes that at that time, this is in, I started in 1985, houses were running in Vegas between 50 and $75,000, okay? for a house, um, I made over $100,000 in my first 12 months as a new agent. That is a lot of units. About 80% of my business, I lean towards listings. 20% were buyers, and, a, and that 20%, the majority of that were my sellers. So truthfully, my listings were 95% of my business, and the buyers I got, which today I would tweak, the way I did that, but the buyers I got were mostly my sellers buying a new house, selling and buying something else. And then the 5% of that was buyers coming from 
an advertising scenario or whatever I did, which I truly did not have a good system. That's one of the things I would change today. All right. So now I started taking listings rapidly. Okay. I was out there because, oh, wait, let me step back. I love, one of the things that relaxed me was going to the movies. All right. Um, I was a movie buff. It didn't really matter what the movie was, but sitting in there, eating my popcorn, just watching a movie, relaxed me. I was in a dark room, no conversation. It was just really good. And I would go five days a week. I mean, it was crazy. I would go all the time. And I'd have agents come up to me and go, can I ask you a question? I go, sure. They go, um, how are you doing all this business? All you freaking do is go to the movies. What are you doing? And I said, the difference is, is my day is gauged by appointments, not hours. Okay, I don't care about hours. I care about the appointments. So every day is productive for me because I already have clarity on what I need to do. My definition of product, uh, uh, being productive is. What is that? Two new appointments. That's all I do. So you, you think I'm doing all this other stuff, but I'm not. In fact, I'm horrible at a lot of the other stuff. Seven months into the business, I hired a full-time assistant. Um, but prior to that, okay, I did it. And I really, when I hired the person, really couldn't afford it at that time specifically, but it didn't matter because I knew I didn't want to do A, B, C, D, and I could have Brenda handle everything for me, okay, which she did, all right, after seven months uh, working. All right, so, so they would do it, and I said, that's, that's my secret sauce. I know what my definition of production is. And that's what I do. So it really doesn't matter if I go to the movies or I sleep the rest of the day, as long as I do my production. Okay. I got to a point where I surpassed 50 listings in inventory. Once I surpassed 50 listings in inventory, I, I, I tweaked. I said, Mark, now that you're here, the only thing you have to worry about is never drop below 50 listings. I don't care how many sell, you want them all to sell, but that's your goal now. I had a new little focus. Never go below 50. Never go below 50. So if 10 sold, I had to get 10 more. Had to get 10 more. That was the thing. Because I said, as long as I stay at 50 listings in inventory, I always have inventory on the shelf that continues to sell. I have the entire marketplace working for me, selling my inventory. And I loved it. So I had one focus keep my listings over 50. And how do I do that? I do two appointments a day. That's it. That was my focus. And it was very, very successful for me. Over time, my skill set got better and better and better. And I could go on less appointments to get the business because I was better. I was a better communicator. I was a better presenter. Um, I, you know, uh, um, I learned more about the company's tools, which by the way, at that time was nowhere near the tools we have today, but there were certain things, you know, print advertisement was powerful then. And we did a lot of print and I had a lot of listings. And so I leveraged up that to get my appointments. Okay. And to get my business. All right. Any questions on that before I go on? Pretty clear. All right, so, so next, all right, so there was my mindset. Now let's bring that to today and talk about some of the things that I see affecting people. By the way, when I said I would cut it in half, if you don't come in each day with the commitment of one new opportunity, you didn't work that day. Well, Mark, I got to push back. I was in the office for 18 hours yesterday. Wow, that's even worse. I would rather have you laying on the beach doing nothing than work 18 hours without a new opportunity. Insanity. The only way that would make sense is, wait, Mark, I had 50 in escrow. I'm dealing with problems because I want these 50 deals to close. You got me. You're a productive son of a gun. No problem. You're rocking. You were dealing with problems. Totally get your 18 hour day, but you're also going to make five, seven, a million dollars this year. So no problem. You're, you're, you're rocking. But the normal scenario is, oh, I'm doing stuff. Well, stuff doesn't work. 
You got to be productive. Otherwise, what are you doing? And so every day, one commitment, every one of you should have, everyone listening to my voice right now, one new opportunity. But Mark, where do I get it? I don't care. I know it'll be a human being that you'll talk to. That's it. My recommendation, focus on your strengths, focus on your sphere, focus on the activities that you enjoy most. Well, Mark, you know what? I, I don't like expireds. Uh, you know, there's not a lot out now. I, I, I really don't like for my owners. <clears throat> I really don't have a sphere. Um, I don't have any past clients. You know, Mark, I hate people. Okay, well, you know what, guys? That's a problem. All right. So if ultimately you don't want to do anything that is within the real estate activity sales site, it's an issue. So you got to pick, doesn't have to be the same as the person next to you, but you got to pick what are your couple areas that you choose to focus on. I'm going to open house king or queen. Beautiful. That works. You know what? I like canvassing neighborhoods, specifically in the open houses I do. That works. Mark, I'm a FISBO guy. I like FISBO. Great. That works. Mark, I'm all about my sphere. I've lived in this town for years. I have a big sphere. I, I'm organizing it, getting it in the VAC. Great. Great. I don't care how you're meeting people. There's no wrong way to meet other human beings, but you got to meet them every day. And if you're not, no. In the back of your mind, I want you telling yourself, I didn't meet any new opportunities today. Based on Mark's definition, I was totally unproductive today. That is correct. Yep. No hold barge. I would tell you that unless there's a absolute reason, something to do, I had to do this because it was very productive for me, then guess what? It is what it is. All right. Now, one last thing on this, guys. We're not robots. Mark, did you ever miss a day that you weren't productive? Yes. I just don't focus on that. It's like a lost hotel room. I was supposed to work on Tuesday. I didn't feel good. I stayed home, whatever. I slept in. Guess what? When I come Wednesday, do you have to now do two appointments? Nope. Or I'm sorry, do I do four appointments? Nope. I do my two. In your case, you would do your one. You don't add them together. You don't remember. Each day, you know what to do. It doesn't add in. What if I go on vacation for a week? When you come back, you're back to your one appointment, not seven because you've been gone for a week. You keep it at one. Real simple, real clean. All right. So now I hear people talking now, low inventory, low inventory, Mark, Mark, you got to admit there's low inventory. No, there isn't. No, there isn't. There's low inventory in the MLS system. Get it. But the houses didn't go away. And please let's separate from the fires. I get it. Some people, I, I was doing that and someone said, well, some did go away. I got it. All right. But in reality, houses didn't go away. I know as realtors, we're very comfortable going to that nice computer box and going, huh, let's see what's available today. And we don't have as much freedom only to do that today. To me, that's an opportunity because I know most of the realtors won't go out there and do what they need to do to meet the people. Okay, great. Gives me more opportunity. All right. Because I know the inventory is there, it just not, it has not chosen to be placed in the computer. That's why we're doing so many transactions. When I look at our listings taken, I see so many listings coming in through the transaction itself, meaning it never listed in the MLS. It was found, it was placed into escrow as a listing you found for a purchaser, but it was never ever listed prior. Now it's a listing. Okay, but no one got to sell it because you sold that property when you put it into escrow. All right, so this first category is get your mind right. Got to get your mind right. Not low inventory, just low inventory in the MLS and it falls on me to find it. Focus on solutions, not problems. I never dwell on problems. Doesn't mean they don't exist. I'm not ignoring them. They just don't help me. If you could show me focusing on the problem will get me more listings, make more sales, please more clients, I'll focus on problems all day long. It just doesn't work. What works is focusing on solutions gets me more business, gets me more clients, gets me more success. So I focus on solutions and I don't dwell on the problem. 
We talked about this, having complete clarity on what you want to accomplish over the next 12 months and why these goals are important. If you're making up goals, well, I want to make 100 grand this year. That's really important to me. Really? Why is that important? Well, it just, it's a goal I have. I really want to do that. Okay. What happens if you don't do it? Well, nothing. I mean, I really could live on 32,000. It's really, I don't have to make a hundred. Okay. Then you don't own that goal. Okay. And guys, you don't owe the truth to me. You owe the truth to you. So bottom line is get truthful with yourself. What is mandatory? You need to understand that you are the CEO of your business. The way I like to always look at it is if, if the board of directors was talking to me, my board of directors, so I'm the CEO, but I've got a board of directors looking down at Mark Stark going, hey, what are we doing this year? What are you ensuring, Mark, that we will achieve this year? Oh, and by the way, Mark, I don't want to hear your excuses. I don't care about COVID. I don't care about this. What are we going to accomplish? And what are you going to figure out how to get there regardless of the environment we're in? And sometimes that's not easy. That can be very challenging as COVID was. So you've got to really be wholeheartedly committed to you. That's the biggest challenge I find. Are you truly committed to you and your success? Because if you're making a commitment and not following through, you're not. It's like, I want to be in good shape. I just never go to the gym or work out at home. Well, being in shape is not a big goal for yours. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Because we all live our priorities. And I feel like in, I embrace my priorities, even my weaknesses. I don't argue with the truth. So you know what? I know if I walk my dog at three in the morning, every morning, even though I want, don't want to do it, that's a priority to me. Okay. I don't do that. I'm just giving that as an example, but that's a priority. All right. I know if I work out every morning, it's a priority. I know if I don't do it, it's not a priority. We only do our priorities, even if we don't want to do it. If you mow your lawn every Friday, I'll tell you this much. I don't know if you enjoy it, but I know it's a priority. Why? Because you do it. Simple rule of thumb. If you do it, it's a priority. If you don't do it, it's not a priority. All right. Um, focus on your goals and ignore the distractions. I get so many distractions coming my way from businesses, vendors, other brokerages, uh, 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 um, uh, financial, economic information. I don't, I have the gift of blindness. Doesn't mean I ignore what's going on, but I, no one is going to let me pull myself off of my goals. I'm in charge of that. So I don't care, you know, when someone, well, you know, now that interest rates change, oh, now that this happened, oh, but what about, did you hear what Zillow's doing? I don't care what Zillow's doing. I'm not running Zillow. So every excuse you hear is just that. There's reasons and results. Focus on the result. All right? So once your mindset is set, all right, you need to build a solid foundation for your business. And this is some of the things that honestly, I didn't do well. I would have done a hellacious amount of uh, additional business. And it certainly would have been easier because for me, honestly, it was like starting over every year because I was a grinder. I would get up every day, every day, every day. But if I would have done some of these other things, I would have increased my business and worked smarter instead of hard, just harder. Harder is going to be there too, but smart also helps. So here's some of the things. I would start with a clean database. If you need to create it from scratch, do it. You have to have a database. It is like uh, um, it's saying, I want to be a doctor, but I'm not going to get a degree. I'm sorry. If you want to be a legal doctor, you need to be approved in the United States of in America to actually do operations and be a doctor. Okay. So one of the things, if you're in this business, your database is a must, but Mark, a must, no, it must. 
no excuse, no exceptions. You will have to have a database and it needs to be in a CRM. We provide VAC 2.0. You don't want to use that one? Honestly, I don't care. I want you to, so I do care. But my point of it is, is if you say, well, I use Top Producer. I've been using it for 10 years. I know I pay for it separately. I love it. Cool. My biggest concern is that you have one that you love and that you're using it. We provide one at no cost. You find another one that you're willing to pay for. That's awesome. Cool. Okay. So database must, must, must. Two, you have to create a consistent communication program. I went over this on Facebook Live. I, I'm not worried that yours is the same as the person sitting next to you. You know, Mark, I talked to one of the agents. They have 35 touches a year that they touch every single one of their clients. I've got 15. You both got a great system. Okay, you want to adjust yours? Great. You want to tweak theirs? They bring theirs from 35 down to 30 or from 35 to 42. You bring yours from 15 down to 12 or 15 to 26. I don't care. You'll tweak it based on what you want to do, but you need a consistent communication program that includes face-to-face -face meetings. Mark, I meet face-to-face -face with everyone in my sphere at least once every 18 months, once every year. Cool. That's part of it. And the other touches come from neighborhood reports, postcards, newsletter, uh, a market report, whatever you're sending, whatever it is, it's different touches. I use AdWorks, okay? Because I basically touch them because they, now when they opened up my email, I'm following them to all the sites that they go. I love that. That's a top of mind system. Great. You'll have your system and it should be consistent. So, you know, every day I come in, Mark, you know, um, I, I have my one appointment, you know, based on what we went over. But what I also do is I contact three people in my sphere. That's all I do. Based on my sphere, I've got, you know, 200 people in it today. I want to grow that. But I contact three a day. And I took your advice that when I see an opening for a face-to-face -face meeting and we haven't connected in a while, I immediately go for it and go, you know what? Let's do this. I don't even want to go over it here on the phone. What are you doing for coffee tomorrow? You know, I'm one of those early crazy people. You want to meet at 7.30 for coffee? Are you up early? Yeah, I'm up early too. You want to meet? Let's go over meet at so-and-so. All right, I'll see you there. Looking forward to it. Part of my process. Three a day. Think about that. Now you know. You come in. You have to get your one appointment. You do it by whatever your chosen activities are. And I contact three people in my sphere. Honestly, that's all I do, Mark. Guess what? You'll be one of the most successful agents in the brain. May not be the whatever, you will be extremely successful, guaranteed. Because you don't skip, you are consistent. I do my one and my three. I do my one and I my three. I do my one, I do my three. Some days are busy, crazy. And Mark, I gotta be honest with you, I don't always get my one. I try, I work at it, but I don't always get it. Cool, none of us do. None of us get it every day, doesn't matter. It's the activities, because sometimes you'll go, oh my God, one, I had one day in my career, I went on four appointments in one day and took four listings in one day. I was pumped beyond belief. I got to be honest with you, when I was on the fourth listing, it was like 7.30 at night, I was on the fourth listing. As I went to the door, I'm thinking, they don't have a choice. They're listening with me. This is going to be my best day ever, okay? And I was just pumped, got the listing four out of four. Happen only one time. Okay, so you'll have great days, and then you'll have the days where I was shooting for my two and I goose egged. But in reality, I really didn't goose egg because I met people that just didn't pull the trigger that day. So what? When they list with me 18 months from now, I guarantee you, I'll need the business. All right, consistency is power. Consistent communication program. Have a hyper local technology approach which your company supports you big time i'm all about hyper local communication i don't need a general newsletter if you're using it something because mark is just one of my touches cool no problem but truthfully 
I don't need fluff. I get enough fluff. I don't need another fluff email. I don't need another fluff mailer. What I need, okay, is value. Make it relevant to my world. That's why I love the neighborhood reports. And I'll be honest, I, I wouldn't use the uh, market reports. Not because they're bad, because I have the neighborhood reports. You know what? That's like eating chocolate, or for me, eating chocolate covered, dark chocolate covered almonds. Those are my favorite. Why am I going to waste my time with chocolate when I can eat a chocolate covered almond, which I love? So I'm going to choose the one I love. It's still chocolate, but I might as well eat my favorite. So the reality of it is, is why do I want to use the market reports when I can have a neighborhood report that isolates exactly what's important to my client, be it maybe they have four rentals, that I can do it for four properties, plus their personal residence, and they're getting it from me. And it's relevant to their world because they own those properties in that area. By the way, don't worry. I know there's a thousand uh, homes in your area, but these 317 homes are the only ones that are really like yours. So don't worry, your report is only about those 317. So it will be super relevant to you, Mr. Johnson. Cool. That's what I would do. So hyper local. Strive to become their trusted real estate advisor. I went over this yesterday on Facebook Live. Listen, you know how you become a trusted real estate advisor? You ask great questions. You listen. You solve problems. You request to help out family members. You get to know them. You be authentic. You care. Don't worry about business you don't get. Winners don't focus on what they don't get. Winners focus on what they get. You know, people always tell me, do you know what that other company's going to do this year? I go, I don't know. I go, I know we killed our goals. We tranched on our goals year over year, so I'm thrilled. What if that company beats you and even does more? Congratulations to them. Don't care. I'm a competitive guy. Don't get me wrong. But guess what? My competitive edge comes from my consistency and blind focus on where I want to take our organization and how I want to help our sales executives, not worrying about what Johnny or Billy or Susie's doing. And I will tell you, for the record, you do it my way, you'll kick their ass 98% of the time. And 2% of the time, they'll have a great year and you'll look and you'll go, okay, congratulations to them. Mm. But you'll move on and you'll refocus on what you need to accomplish. All right, guys? The ones who win are the ones who can stay clear on what they're trying to accomplish and stay committed to those goals and continue working on those. Um, I gave you my DRC, my daily revenue commitment, which was my two appointments. And I told you how to do that. You need to pick that. What are the, uh, uh, what are the people you're going to interact with? What are your chosen activities and communications? Um, Base your day on on face to face appointments, not hours. Uh, and here's the thing on DRC, and this is the one that gets pushed back. Don't do it. I didn't do it. Your DRC daily revenue commitment comes first, not second, not third, not fourth. First, but Mark, is it more important? Yes. No, no, but is it more? Yes. Really, it's more important. Uh huh. It comes first. You've heard the thing about always eat the frog first. Okay, get it out of the way. Your DRC is the frog. I love Tony Robbins says this, and I love it. He goes, Don't negotiate with yourself. Stop negotiating with yourself. It's great advice. It's like waking up in the morning and going, oh, God, I just don't feel like working out. You know what? I wonder if I can come home at noon instead of doing it in the morning. You know what? I'll do it in the morning. You know what? I'll work two hours tomorrow instead of doing Stop. Stop negotiating with yourself. Don't think. Stop thinking. Get up and do it. Yeah, we all have days where we're like, this is the last thing I want to do. Oh, my God, the last thing. It's the last thing, the last thing, the last thing. Okay, I'm doing it. It's like going to the gym. The toughest is the drive. Once you're there, you just do it. Getting there is the pain in the butt. And if you're working out at home, which there's so many amazing workouts you can do at home, all right, you're already there. You just got to get out of the rack and walk to the other room. 
or the garage, wherever. Last aspect, and that is the areas that I did horribly, I shared some, but this is another one that I was terrible at that I would change unbelievably in this environment that we're in. And that is success marketing. You know, and, and, and I have to be honest, we, because of our success as a company, we have fallen into that trap in years past. We're not doing it now and we're gonna even do a better job on it in the future. But when you're successful or just busy, you don't celebrate and market your successes. You have to. You know, do you ever see somebody and you're like, oh my God, who are they using? They're using that agent? Oh my God, that agent's the worst. But I guarantee you this much, that agent connected, sparked their interest, did something to inspire them, to use them, whatever it was, they got it. And one of the thing is, is celebrating your success, celebrating yours and your company's successes. So you do those mail outs, every listing sold, every listing, every sale. My entire sphere gets that. Why? It's not even in their area. They don't even know if it's in their area or not. You send it because they get it. The lifespan of a, of a postcard is supposed to be three seconds. Wow. Man, Mark is busy. That guy is amazing. On the back of it, you know what? I want stuff maybe about the neighborhood. I certainly want a URL that they can get instant value of their home through buy side. So I'm always thinking everything that goes out has a thought out plan and it's consistent. I do the same thing each time. And they get so many from me in different ways, they're gonna remember. And then don't forget, I am have a consistent communication plan. So they're not only gonna get passive stuff from me, they are going to get face-to-face -face and communication, proactive from me. All right, questions. Oh my gosh, well, your um, enthusiasm is infectious, first of all. So thank you so much. Um, I saw one uh, question in the chat going back to when you were making your calls and it was, um, do you use a script, did you use a script or did you just have a catchphrase when you were setting those appointments? I, when I first started, I, I joined all of them. I mean, I went to Tom Hopkins. Uh, I went Mike Ferry. Uh, I also dealt with, uh, um, oh God, uh, um, uh, I feel bad, I'm forgetting his name. Uh, Dave, David, uh, oh God, I apologize. I can't just think of his last name, but I went to a lot of the different ones and I used a script. Now, uh, full disclosure, I changed the script around um, to make it work for me and my personality. And um, there were some areas like with Mike Ferry, I didn't agree with. Um, I understood why he was doing it, but I just had a different attitude based on my personality and what I wanted to do. And so I tweaked it for me. So I always use the script, but to start, and then I read it over because when someone says, well, I'm not into scripts, you know what you just said? I'm not into practicing. I'm not into knowing what I want to say. That, that makes no sense. Okay. That's like hiring an actor and the actor saying, I don't need to read the script. I'll just show up. What are you talking about? How are you going to know what, what to say? So, you know, you do want a script. What you don't want is, I don't want to be a robot on the phone. Well, that only happens because you don't know, you haven't read the script enough. When you practice it enough, it becomes yours. When you sound like a robot, I know one thing's for sure. You're not doing it a lot because you're not, you're not melding with it. It's got to change the word so it's you. And so that's how I did the scripting. Um, I have one more kind of on, maybe it's not a script, but a, a previous question was, you know, right now in our crazy um, seller's market, we give our, our opinion, our professional opinion, and sometimes our sellers don't value it and they do, you know, what they want to do. How do you gain their respect so that they, they go with, our professional opinion. Okay, so we'll talk about it. One more thing, remember, as it comes to scripts, 
Um, through Rick Baraby, you can get the book of everything and through your leadership team. And that is every script you'd ever want for any reason. It's called the book of everything. So we've already have all the scripts there, but remember, make it your own. Okay, so here, here's the thing. It's a great comment Shannon just brought up and whoever asked that question, it's, it's, it's powerful. Because here's the mistake we make. Okay. My job, that's why consistency is so important. My job isn't to change their attitude. I, I'm gonna say this and I don't want you to take this wrong. I don't care about what they're, if they agree with me or not. Here's what I care about okay, is I, number one, I don't want them to be on the fence. I, if they're on the fence, my job is you're not going to move forward or you're going to move forward with me. I don't care which side. I really don't. Of course, I want them to go with me. That's not the message. My message is if they're on the fence and I'm involved, I'm getting you off the fence. You're going to choose. Mark, I hate you. We would never use you. Get out of my house. I appreciate the clarity. Okay, there it is. Okay, and that will never happen, and nor has that ever happened to me. Okay, uh, they normally will go, Would you like chocolate chip cookies? Sure, come on in. Okay, so they're, they're very helpful that way. All right, so based on that, all right, uh, um, in your mind, I don't try and change their mind. I seek to understand first. So, to Shannon's question, they, we advise them, they, they like us, they want to use us. So it's a different challenge now. It's the challenge of we want to use you, but we're going to price our property at 552 when you know it's worth 452, even in this hot market. And you know, Mark, 450 is high. I was willing to go 499 because I know it's not an exact science, but 550, it's just craziness. It's going to be a waste of time. Here's the way I handle that. I said yesterday on Facebook Live, be careful. And I always want to position the client, me and the client against the world. Me and the client against the market. Me and the client against the appraiser. Me and the client against value. Never, never do you want to position yourself, me and the market against my seller. Me and the facts against my seller. Me and the knowledge against my seller. Never, never, never. I can get the same message across by being on my seller's side and being frustrated with where the market is to get it. So let me give you an example. It's take a couple minutes, but I think it's worthwhile. When I go through a house and I know they want way too much, I want to figure out motivation. All right, are they really motivated? Because I will take an overpriced listing if I have clarity that, you know, Mark, they're moving to Texas and have to move in July. Great, strategically, I'm gonna take a longer listing and we're gonna try it at the higher price. And I'm gonna tell them my concern on their behalf is we might lose some activity at the beginning, which is powerful activity. But you know, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, this is a gorgeous house. I see a lot of houses, da, 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 da. So I'm okay as long as there's motivation. However, let's say there's not motivation. In fact, let me step back one more thing and I will go to the non-motivation. The way I deliver the message, if I want them to understand my challenge and my frustration to, to Shannon's point of, Mark, we're really trying to help them. We do have the right intel. We're, we're not trying to hurt them. We're trying to do the best for them, but they're not really internalizing. Here's how I get them to internalize it. I'll walk through the house and I know they want 550. So let's use my example and it's worth 450. I'll say, you know, Mr. And Mrs. Johnson, I, I have to tell you, I've seen a lot of houses. Uh, I see houses every day. And I just want to tell you, um, you know, congratulations. You, your property is exquisite. It is, it is uh, um, kept up immaculately. And here's what people don't seem to understand. Okay. And as you took me through the house, I was listening and I was taking notes, which I do. Okay. They don't, people don't realize the window coverings that you're leaving, how truly expensive those window coverings are. You know what else they don't understand? Your floor coverings. Okay. Of what you've put in the granite. Okay. The upgraded floorings 
what you did, your lawn, okay, of how exquisite you've kept your back and front, it's amazing. They don't realize the expense of what it could your appliances. Everything that you've done to upgrade your property, what the buyers don't understand is how much money this actually takes to do. You know who else doesn't understand it? The appraisers. I mean, they come into these properties. They don't take everything we just talked about into account. They'll come in and they'll look at the comps and they'll come in with a 450 value. They won't understand that the true value in the house can be $550,000. That's my biggest concern for us because I get it. I see it. Our challenge is the appraisers and what the buyers are going to see. What do you give me your feedback on this, Mr. Johnson? Do you see the difference? I wasn't against them. I still got the information out that I needed to get out. I got comps. I got appraisal issues. I got what the buyer's going to see. I got competitors. I got all that stuff out. But this is, I don't have, when, how many of you have had an appraisal come in low that you didn't agree with? It should have been higher. Raise your hand. Okay. See, it, you had to deal with it even though you didn't agree. Well, guess what? Every one of my pre presentations is like that. I don't have to agree with the appraisal. I don't have to agree with the comps, okay, to have to live with them. So I'll manage with those comps, but guess what? That seller is going to feel we're like this. Now, here's the other kicker. Now I've got a non-motivated seller. Yeah, Mark, uh, just so you know, I'll die here. This is the third time they've said this. I'll die here before uh, taking less than 550, a penny. And by the way, that 550 is after all costs. That's net to me. No, you know what? I, I got to tell you, Mr. Johnson, as I've said of how you've kept up the property, I have to be really, uh, 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 I want to congratulate you on something else. So few clients I run into have managed their finances so well that you're in a great position. See, you don't have to sell your property today. You're able to wait until the market catches you. You don't have to sell it. Don't listen to some agent coming in here going, well, you know, here's your competitors. Here's the comparables. You've got to take this if you really, because they don't understand where you're coming from. You have positioned yourself perfectly. You do not have to sell today. You can wait. So you get your dollar out, all right? Brilliant. Because I would walk away now than disappoint you later, because guess what? If you wait, which you can, okay, you'll get that value. You know, let me ask you this, um, and I so appreciate your time today. Uh, you know, there's gonna be people you know that have not positioned themselves like you have. I want you to do me a favor, okay? If you know of anyone who's thinking of selling or buying and hasn't done the job you have in positioning them and needs to sell now, I would really appreciate that business. And I will make sure that it's in. But for you, I wouldn't sell right now. No, they're not going to do right by you. No way. The market is not going to support what you deserve. And I get it. Guess why? Because he's not going to sell. He's going to get an offer in for 510 cash. And I'm going to go like, oh my God. God loves me. This is great. I'm going to present it. And he's not going to accept it. And who's the problem? Me. You know why? Because he told me he didn't want to take 550 less minus expenses, which is really a 570 or 562 offer. He told me I was the one who didn't believe him. I'm the problem, not him. He was honest. He even said, Mark, I don't know how I have to explain this to you. Let me help you out. I will die here before I sell it for less. Is it, I don't know if that's, oh, I'm not being direct enough. He's being honest. You're the one ignoring him. I don't ignore that. What I did is flipped him to a referral opportunity and not direct. Now, six months goes by and something happens in life. A job change, a family sickness, uh, whatever. A relocation must have to happen. Guess what? He's in my sphere and I want him thinking of me. Hey, Mark, come on out now. What's up? There's been a change. I need to meet with you. You got it. I'll be right over. Listen, I've got to relocate and I got to move quickly. All right. Um, well, let's do this. I want to maximize the equity here. But again, we're dealing with this. I know, I know. We just got to get it sold. Okay, I'm on it.
Okay, now there's motivation, so attitudes change. Long-winded story, but I, I, I wanted to make sure in the last few minutes we got here that uh, um, it was valuable for you. Did that help? Yes. That was awesome. Okay, cool. Joe, do you have any questions there? Um, we had one question before the meeting. Um, sure. it, was, it was tying to um, Apex and maybe how, um, you know, we've, we've been talking a lot about that. Mark, your spin on that, how important is it to talking about Apex at the listing appointments? I, I, I bring it up 100% of the time, one, and I don't care if they use it or not. You know, it was like when, when we had assumable loans, I would always bring up an AITD, which is an all-inclusive deed of trust. I used it once out of bringing it up every time. I want them to see that they have options and what those options are, and they may not fit them. But I would ask questions laying the groundwork to bring Apex up. And you know what? If they're trying to compete, like let's say they said, well, you know what? We have an iBuyer offer. We know that they'll give us this. I go, oh. You got to hear about our Apex program. They'll make you the eye buyer and you keep the additional money. What is that about? I'll always bring that up. Okay. Um, you know, Mark, you know, we know it's a good time to sell. We just don't want to sell until we know where we're moving. Yeah, no problem. That's where Apex can help. They'll go in and buy, okay, the house for you, okay, based on your commitment and your agreed upon price. Then we sell the house after the fact. What is that about? Oh, let me explain. Or, you know what? I won't do it justice. Let me get you with our people at Apex and they'll explain exactly how they can help. And I'll be there with you, but let them explain it. Because I a couple of sales executives said, well, I'm not comfortable explaining it. You don't have to. How do you deal with the lender? Well, I let them explain it. Same way. Same thing. Perfect, perfect. Any other questions? I see we have one question in the chat and it's probably going to be answered next week, but where do you plan to take our company in the future? Well, I do talk about it uh, on, I, I do, Abe, I think it's about 15 minute uh, overview of where we're going um, and uh, really where we're going to continue to strive. And you're going to see what um, you, our sales executives, accomplished 19 to 20, and get ready because it's truly going to knock your socks off. Um, guys, you know, I learned this from Mark Masevic, who was the original founder of the company. And he said, Mark, when the market is good and you're having growth, that's the time to become more aggressive than ever. So we are going to become more aggressive than ever in the future. We're already revamping uh, VAC and upgrading VAC 2.0 again. We've got additional systems coming in. So you'll hear about all this on my presentation. So you will hear that next week. Um, let me close by saying this. You know, guys, um, what I find is we make a choice as individuals. We're going to make our life easier or we're going to make it harder. Real estate success is the same way. Don't make it harder than it is. It's some few simple commitments day to day a daily commitment, and you'll be amazed at how much success that you'll have. And the other thing that'll happen is, is as you get more successful, you will either go one of two ways. You'll say, you know what? I'm really happy with this because I have other loves in my life and I have other passions. Awesome. No problem. Or I'm starting to realize I can do great things. I can really ramp this up. I see it now. You know, people ask me, did you always think you were going to be an agent? And then were you always focused on owning the company? Are you kidding me? No way. I had no idea I was ever going to get into management. I was selling, you know, I had my, I was on my seventh year selling and Mark Maseva came to me and I had so much respect for Mark. I said, okay, let me give this a try. And then that led to this. And then something else happened and something else happened before I knew it. You know what? I was the general manager and then I was an owner and then I bought the company. All that I wish to tell you, I had a plan every step of the way. I had no plan. Here's what I did though. Because I worked hard and I was doing the right things for the right reasons, when an opportunity opened up, then I did see it. And I thought, you know what? 
here's where I can help. You know what? Here's where I can help. You know what? Here's an opportunity. And it just kept going, 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 because now I'm in a mindset that I truly believe anything is possible. Anything. I get goosebumps thinking about it because I now have no ceiling on where I know we can go. And that helps me because I'm an aggressive conservative. I'm conservative. I have to see the, I have to see that it makes sense. But once I see it, then it's like gloves come off and we're going. Right. And uh, I'm just excited to have all you with us <laughs> going yeah. forward. Could you take one more minute? And uh, there was a question that came in. It said, if you were in this market, what would you do? Uh, what would be your approach for getting business? And maybe take your DRC commitment and equate it to today. And what would you do? Yeah, I mean, and again, this is just me because this is one of the things I enjoy. I would rather be outside than in, in the office. So for me, door knocking right now, Okay. And I would do, you know, and I think we're just about past the COVID stuff, but if I had to do a, a mask or worst cases, I would do a door hanger. Okay. Cause people are getting everything delivered now. So they'll definitely, okay. Catch that. I would be out there with the public because I will tell you this, your competition in realtors is this when you're out there meeting face to face with the public. You've taken all the realtors in the market and you said, I'm going to minimize that down. And um, I shared a stat yesterday on Facebook Live, 91% of people say they would use their previous realtor, but only 13% actually do. So, you know what? Getting out there, meeting the people, showing them that you're not sitting back, not focusing and doing your job, that would be the number one thing I would focus on and tie it into what we talked about today. Perfect. All right. Fantastic, Mark. All right. Well, I appreciate uh, everybody. Thank you so much for today. Don't forget, we'll be sending out our general sales event, as you know, on the 16th. However, we, we've got the national convention coming up too. And I know uh, Chris Stewart and his team has a lot to share as well. And they're going to be sharing more on the uh, um, loyalty gap as well. And I'm looking forward to hearing that. So have a great rest of the day, everybody. Thank you so much. Fantastic. My Thank pleasure. you. My pleasure.